declaration right to make a declaration about what god has done for us um, in christ and specifically about uh, the area of finances the area of uh, prosperity the area of success um the area of promotion and and provision right what the lord has done for us and uh, um just want us to you know uh, to make that part of our speaking right um joshua 1:8 we see the instruction that god gives joshua and says let this book of the law not depart from your mouth but you shall you know uh, you, you shall um, meditate on it day and night and you shall be careful to observe to do everything according to what is written in it then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success so that's the instruction we see the lord giving um, god giving um, joshua at a very crucial point in his life right it's a very um, uh, at a point when he was probably intimidated by the by the magnitude of uh, you know the responsibilities that he was about to carry about to shoulder so uh, or, or he had already you know taken on and the lord gives this very important principle and he says you know i will be with you wherever you go i will be with you as i was with moses so i will be with you so the presence of god and the principle of god the principle that he um, gives joshua you know both are important so we need to consider both the presence of god and the principle so even as we make this uh, you know proclamation or confession of god's word um again i want to reiterate you know the presence of god in our lives the relationship uh, that we as branches uh, have with the vine you know, that's of paramount importance and uh, our identity and our, our intimacy with god and everything you know everything flows out of that and and then you know we we look at these principles right so it's like it's not either this or that but it's both right both the presence and the precepts the presence and the the person and the principles right so um okay so let's do this right um i'm actually using the church app apc church app if uh, you know if some of you don't um, if you've not downloaded that i would recommend you can go to google play store and you know download the app It has a lot of uh, very useful resources okay so let's um, uh, let's do this right it's about prosperity and success so you know you, i know you have your mics muted but you could you know uh, repeat this after me um right i am like a tree planted by rivers of water I bring forth my fruit in its season. My leaf does not wither, and whatever I do prospers. I am blessed in all the works of my hands. I follow the Lord, his word and his ways, and he causes me to prosper and gives me good success. as i walk humbly and in the fear of god he blesses me with prosperity honor and long life man let's um, let's make another proclamation um this is about promotion you know my promotion growth and increase comes from god it is god who makes room for my promotion as i submit to the lord he exalts me in his time it is god who sets me in places of leadership authority and influence okay here's one more about provision and supply right my god provides for all of my needs according to his riches through jesus christ the lord is my shepherd and i will not be in want The Lord is a sun and shield to me. He does not withhold any good thing from me. God gives me more than what I need. So that I always have all I need for myself. 
plenty to bless others with. It is God who gives me the ability to make wealth. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, in line with this proclamation, in line with this confession, Lord, of uh, your word, your promises, God. We, uh, yes, Lord, even as we've declared, we believe that we will walk in the fullness of all that we have declared, Lord. We, we believe that we will experience the power of the truth, Lord, that we have just spoken out, Lord, uh, that we have declared, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your power. Great is your power that is at work in us, Lord, the resurrection power. And Lord, we thank you for the power of your spirit that you will bring things, Lord, into existence that even those things which are not there, Lord, Lord, the, some of the things that we have proclaimed by faith, oh God, uh, you will bring it to existence. And I pray that over each and every person, Lord, uh, in class who, uh, who just declared these truths. And I just pray that they will experience, that we will experience the fullness of what we proclaimed, even as we uh, walk, continue to walk in faith. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, awesome. Let's um, let's just pick up from where we um, where we, where we paused last uh, last class. We we we've look, been looking at the principles, like principles for um, God ordained prosperity, um, and we've been looking at some very interesting things. Right? We looked at uh, um, how we need to um, uh, what is the first one? Yeah, putting God first. Right? We need to put God first, and then we we looked at how we need to do what God wants us to be doing. Uh, then we looked at how we need to practice righteousness because that's the that's the very nature of God. So we cannot, you know, have uh, 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 we cannot say that okay, I, this is what God has for me. God has the best for me, and then um, you know do. Uh, something that is opposite of God's nature and expect to see fruit or expect to see his hand of approval on it, right? So we, we looked at that very important principle of practicing righteousness. Then after that, we looked at work. Work itself is a vehicle. Or work itself is a channel through which God provides for us supernaturally. So there's no reason to, um, you know, to look at work as something unspiritual. There's no reason to look at work as uh, something that is uh, of the devil and something that is cursed and so on. We see right in creation that God, you know, uh, put Adam and Eve and said, you know, ask them to tend to God, to take care gave them a responsibility. So um, we see that uh, work is spiritual, work is God ordained. And uh, and yes, it after the fall, it is out of the toil and sweat of the brow and everything. But, uh, you know, as redeemed creations, we see that, uh, you know, God will use our work. We see several instructions that to bless others with it, right? It's a, it's a way by which God provides uh, for our needs uh, through the work that we do, right? To be gainfully employed, so there's nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to say that you know it's not a lack of faith to work, uh, it's not unspiritual to work. So work itself, and then we looked at um, uh, our faith in God, you know, uh, using the principles of faith. So we looked at that last class. Okay, so today. Let's um, look at in in line with uh, you know using the principles of faith. When we studied the principles of faith, we we saw that uh, you know many examples of uh, the Lord reaching out and healing and uh, and we saw that people were uh, you know saying God, if you are willing, right? Um, so there was no doubt uh, you know in some of their minds about the ability of God to heal uh, but certainly there was something about the willingness of god to heal and, and every time the lord jesus he said i am willing right um, and what he did on the cross talks about his willingness um, to to change things in our lives physically materially emotionally etc spiritually in all realms right to bring about change to to break down the or the outcome of the curse and so um, bring in uh, the the finished work the outcome of the finished work of the cross in our lives so you know the 
uh, so we we don't have to have any doubt about the willingness of God, um, because uh, we've studied the character, we've studied the nature of God, that He's good, He's willing, and He is able. Right. So the ability of God um, is something that you know all believers, you know, we we know God can, uh, but will will God do it? You know, is He willing? Um, that's something that we sometimes grapple with, and we see saw through scripture that yes, he is willing. It's a willing; uh, he's there with the, both willingness and ability. So, um, so we can stand in faith because if we do not know the willingness of God, then uh, we are not we we cannot actually stand in faith, right? Um, so, yeah, to be assured of the willingness of God as well, right? Um, so the next thing that we're going to see, uh, let me just share the notes with you. Um, okay, so the next thing that we uh, we see is um, uh, is again flowing out of that principle of faith is to speak God to speak God's word of prosperity over your life. Okay, uh, maybe it's something new for some of us. Uh, maybe we think sometimes, you know, oh, how can I do that? It seems as if, you know, it seems presumptuous, etc. Uh, how can I assume this? And how can I speak that God wants to prosper? Now, just like how we did this, uh, you know, before the start of class, um, we look at scripture, you know, all the, the declaration that we did this morning um, out of for provision, for promotion, and uh, about, uh, you know, God uh, uh, bringing about prosperity um, uh, in our lives, we, uh, we see that it is, um, uh, you know, it is based on scripture. Like the first one, I'm just, uh, you know, for example, Acts 20, 28, Ephesians 1, 7, um, uh, I'm sorry, and, uh, yeah, Psalm 1, sorry. We start, talked about you know, the tree planted by rivers of water, right? Psalm 1, 1 to 3, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 8, Joshua 1, 8, and so on. So we see that, uh, you know, the, it's based on the word of God. So our confession is uh, ceases to be an assumption when it's based on the word of God. Okay, so that's the thing. It is based on the word of God. It is truth that is covered by the word of God, that is proclaimed by the word of God. So we are saying what God is saying, or what God says. We say what God continues to say about us, or about our situation, about our circumstance. Um, and that's a confession. That's a faith confession. Okay. And uh, like we said, it is not um, isolated from the relationship. It, you know, it's not a mantra. It's not a formula. Um, you know that will work outside of the relationship. Right? It is based on the word of God. It's based on the will of God for our lives. It's based on relationship. Right. So it's a principle uh, as well, and, and it goes with the. the the person and the presence of the Lord, right? So, so we declare, we proclaim what God says about uh, prospering us um, uh, over our lives, right? So we say that. Okay, so we we'll look at Proverbs eighteen, and uh, you know, I, I think uh, some of us are very familiar with that. Proverbs eighteen. Uh, Verses 20 and 21, you know, death and life, um, the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Right? So uh, Proverbs 18, uh, um, that's uh, uh, 21. 20 is, uh, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. So there's a direct connection between what happens, happens in the in the physical with, uh, you know, what happens in the spiritual, right? Um, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So, so two very different outcomes um, happening the same source, you know, you know uh, having the same source in common, but it depends on what we actually uh, declare, what we actually proclaim, you know, we can either speak uh, death, we can speak some a negative outcome, or we can speak life, something that is positive, something that is good, something that is intended by God, and we can 
speak that out and it says that those who love it will eat its fruit meaning that okay what is the outcome that you want so what is the what co- outcome that you desire you will eat its fruit meaning you will experience that uh, uh, outcome okay the fullness of that the experience of what you will experience or you will have the manifestation um uh, of what you are declaring what you are you know proclaiming okay so um you know many examples that we see in scripture where god says you know you speak it out you speak thus you know um we see it in uh, uh, let's say if we if we, if we go to jeremiah chapter 1 let's um, let's turn there Okay, Jeremiah chapter one, and the Lord's dealing with Jeremiah, um, and He says, uh, Jeremiah one and verse nine. Then the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Okay, so we see this um, God saying, you know, uh, I put my words. and i've set you over the nations and uh, to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant so um, the outcome of god's words god's um, the words of god of an eternal god in the mouth of jeremiah a finite person um, but this is what god's word brings about this is what god's word uh, will result in right um, to to either build or even to pull down throw down strongholds etc right so we see that um another uh, place where we see god you know uh, uh, instructing um uh, the, the the word be spoken is in ezekiel 37 right where the where the prophet has a has an experience uh and an encounter with god and and uh, a prophetic um, you know uh, an experience that he has and we see that in ezekiel 37 where um uh, it says the hand of the lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which is full of bones so the lord uh you know shows ezekiel this valley um you know it's it's something that he uh, you know he's is brought there and he's shown this valley there were many bones there were dry bones and uh, the lord asked the question you know, can these bones live and obviously ezekiel knows better than to answer that question so he's he knows it's a trick question he, whatever response he gives he's going to get caught so he says lord you know right and uh, the lord says okay this is what i want you to do right um, speak or prophesy prophesy means to speak forth prophesy to these bones and say to them okay what is he saying o oh, bones hear the word of the lord thus says the lord god to these bones surely i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live okay so um so this is the instruction prophesy to these bones prophesy to this situation where uh, it seems as if everything is lost it seems as if nothing will nothing can come out of it it's a it's a dead situation right it's a foregone lost cause so god is saying you know prophesy say say to these bones so he's giving his instruction he's giving his words and he's prompting ezekiel to do something so ezekiel does that and uh, uh and then something happens you know so he says verse 7 if you read ezekiel 37 sorry in verse 7 so i prophesied as i was commanded okay so so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied then he talks about the supernatural work of god so he talks about the noise the rattling the bones coming together and so on and then he uh, and then he's also you know uh instructed to prophesy to the breath to come in and then um, they and then it talks about how um rises up uh, a great army so um so he has this whole experience and uh, 
this symbolically represented the the uh, house of israel and uh, how god is going to revive them and and so on right so so the thing is this that what we learn is that um, uh, we need to learn to speak god's word what god wants for us what god intends for us you know there's no point in saying you know um, you know we uh, i'm poor i will be poor i will continue to be poor right god wants to raise you up so that you can be a blessing right um, not to be in an arrogant way not to be in a proud way to show off your wealth and riches no god wants us to have enough and more for our needs um, and uh, you know and and enough and more so that we can be a blessing to others right so this is what god desires he wants um he wants to step in and do that supernatural work and and this is one of the principles that we see that we need to speak uh, his word what does god want you to speak you know about your finances what is god saying that uh, he will do you know uh, find out the will of god find out the, the plan and purpose of god um uh, what does the word of god say so our confession is uh, is not something that is based on you know our own thinking it's not like a positive positive uh, you know um, positive thinking or a positive affirmation um, that's just you know out of nowhere no it, it has its roots it has its foundation very firm and secure in the word of god right and again i want to say that it's it's not devoid of it's not separated from the person the presence of of the lord right so so that that's something that we see here right? speak god's word of prosperity prosperity over your life so that's a, that's a principle then we also see that we need to honor god in our finances right giving to the work of god and giving to god's people and so on so um we see several scriptures uh, um on that um let's say let's look at luke 6 and 38 okay where um god uh, the lord jesus says uh, give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will it uh, will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back to you so it's talking about generosity in giving and the way in which we need to give and the way in which it will be you know given back so uh, we see that um, you know when we do that when we when we give we are actually um, being like him right we are imitating the uh, our generous god we are imitating the greatest giver uh, in the universe that you know john 3:16 talks about how god so loved the world that he gave he gave his best uh, he gave without withholding anything and so uh, we are called to imic- imitate or mimic god you know, as his dear children and and we and, and god has put this principle there and that we as we give um, it is given back to us so we see that uh, it's uh, it's running over and right? you see the uh, the uh, uh the way in which it's given back it says good measure pressed down shaken together and running over uh, god brings into our lives right so um so this is something that we see okay so while we're talking about giving I just wanted to uh kind of uh, digress and talk about a couple of other things right so why do we need to give okay so we see that giving itself um is an act of worship unto god right um it's we 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 saw that you know everything that we have uh, actually comes from him he's the source right so god talks about how the cattle on a thousand hills the gold is his the silver is his it's it's his basically and we have been given this to steward it that as overseers and uh, uh, i mean overseers of what what he what he puts into our lives so when we give back to god uh, it's uh, it's from a, it's from a heart of gratitude it's from a heart of worship to him and uh, we we 
we do this you know it's not grudgingly it's not uh, uh, it's not because uh, a it says something bad will happen if i don't give so i you, you know you don't give it grudg- grudgingly you don't give it out of fear or compulsion but you give it wholeheartedly as a you know as a work of um, as an act of worship to him right so um let me just uh, read a couple of uh, scriptures here first chronicles 16 and uh, uh verses 27 29 okay honor and majesty are before him strength and gladness are in his place give to the lord o families of the peoples give to the lord glory and strength give to the lord the glory due his name bring an offering and come before him o worship the lord in the beauty of holiness okay so this act of bringing an offering and coming before the lord is is an act of worship right to see that um uh, it's 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 not that he needs it but we do it as uh, as an act of worship unto god right so we are recognizing when we give to god uh, we're going to look into deep in, in um, a little bit of detail about you know about tithes offerings and also about arms um, that is giving uh, uh, you know to help people to help them in uh, times of need etc um, so i just want to mention that the giving is an act of worship right so we honor we honor him we're saying god you know this is this belongs everything belongs to you it's an act of surrender just look at it um so so it's an act of worship to god okay um also it is um, you know it, when we give to others it fulfills our covenant relationship with others you know we are in the body of christ and we are called to be a blessing to those in the body we are called to be a blessing to those outside of the body of christ you know with the gospel and and so on um so we are actually uh, you know it's an act of uh, uh, uh it's a covenant relationship primarily to those in the body of christ but we are we can be a source of blessing to those outside as well okay and uh, at second corinthians 9 and verse um, second corinthians 9, I, i'll share this these notes with you as well you can take a look at that second corinthians 9 uh talks about how should a person give okay um second corinthians 9 and uh, uh let's look at verse 6 onwards right but this i say that he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly but he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully so let each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver for god is able to make all grace abound towards you that you having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work and the you know rest of the chapter also talks about uh, uh, you know a few other things about that but um you know it says here that um if you give or when you give uh, you give as you purpose in your heart okay so god's not putting an amount god's not putting a you know a, a, a figure there saying okay this is how it must be but he's saying as you purpose in your heart so you don't do it grudgingly or you know in response to somebody's manipulation or out of fear uh none of that right so you see you know this truth is so liberating right so um it's not like an oppressive hand you know coming up on you and saying okay no you better give now no you give as you purpose in your heart and it says that god uh, you know not grudgingly or of necessity for god loves a cheerful giver okay so this is whom god god loves so it's it's in response to god it is towards him so you give as you purpose uh, in your heart so it, the, and here is the assurance or the reassurance that god is able to make all grace abound towards you okay uh, his divine virtues his unmerited favor he is able to make it all abound 
you know abound meaning you know not in a little measure but in a great measure he is able to do that that you having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work so this is god's intention this is god's desire right so um, a cheerful when we cheer when we give cheerfully we give you know as he would give as god would give and uh, and this is what he says you know and malachi 3 verses 9 and 10 talks about tithing uh philippians 4 15 16 let's let's look at those verses we we will we are going to look at malachi 3 a little later okay um so philippians 4 um and verse 15 right it talks about when um the uh, philippian church which was which was not really a very wealthy uh, a bunch of people but they had their own needs they had they were actually in poverty but they still partnered with paul uh, in the ministry okay it talks about now you philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel when i departed from macedonia no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only for even in thessalonica you sent aid once again uh for my necessities not that i you know seek the gift but i seek the fruit that abounds to your uh, account and um, verse 19 and my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus okay so that's paul's exhortation in saying you know going to his riches in glory uh so from that account or from that vast pool of resources is what god is going to supply you know it's not he's not going to pull from and <clears throat> you know scrape from somewhere and give but no according to his riches and glory he is going to uh, give okay, some so some thoughts here on giving you know give totally um give the first and best give in recognition of the law of sowing and reaping and give with a heart of love okay so um sometimes you know when it comes to giving it can it can be tough you know especially when you know that hey, i don't have much right but you also understand that god is not really you know saying that you need to uh, you know do this so you don't have to do it out of necessity but you do it as you purpose in your heart you do it from understanding the father's heart you do it understanding that he is a giver you do it understanding that god has this in you know in mind for you at the place where you are right now maybe in lack maybe not having all sufficiency in all things is not the place where it's not your final resting place right god wants you to take you from this place and as as you walk with him as you journey with him he wants to take you to a place where you having all sufficiency in all things will have an abundance for every good work right so um, so you give from that place with that understanding so you see that either giving to the work of ministry or the giving to people or even you know tithes and offerings is really an act of faith it's uh, comes from a place of relationship with god you know so when we look at it that way uh, many times you know giving becomes very mechanical right uh the putting in and of the offer tree becomes something mechanical and uh, uh but it need not be so right it can be our act of worship be such a meaningful uh act of worship to god it can be something that we are completely surrendered to so completely yielding uh to and uh, bringing ourselves in submission to god and it can actually put a lot of things to death you know the things um, of the flesh to death um when we do that right um okay so t- three areas of giving okay so one is the tithe okay so what is what is the tithe okay we are in scripture uh, there is this principle of the tithe a 10% okay 1/10 of all that we receive we give unto god okay so we see this principle uh, being established by god of course it was uh, we see it in the old testament it is to uh, where we we see in uh, malachi chapter 3 um let's let's uh, read that 
it's more of a, a rebuke, but we see this instruction. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And he goes on to say what he will do uh, on behalf of us, verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says um, the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So um, even before this, you know, before verse, uh, verses 10, you know, it talks about how people have not done that. And, and then God says, you know, it is an act of robbing him. Right. So, um, so God has established this whole principle of tithing uh, we see in Scripture, okay, and uh, storehouse, of course. And uh, in those days, we know that there was one place where people went to and offered their, you know, uh, uh, in the temple in Jerusalem, and they brought their tithes. They all these kinds of different kinds of offerings. They came and and brought it. But, but practically speaking, whichever you know local church that you are part of, where and I would you know, of course this is just a uh, you know uh, opinion where where you are spiritually fed, okay, where you are part of, where you are connected, where you are spiritually fed, is where you give your tithe to, right? So um, a tithe, then uh, so we can say it's a it's a you know it's it's a debt to God. It's something that we owe God. It's a tenth of what God puts into our lives, brings into our lives, right? Then the second thing is the offering. Okay, it's something that uh, uh, again it's uh, for the work of ministry or for the, to the local church. It's something that we are. It's like a seed that we're privileged to sow. Right? So uh, is it beyond? You know the the, the tithe, yes. Um, so we it's a free will. It's out of our free will again. You know the same principles that we give it without any uh, sense of necessity or out of a grudge. Uh, I mean out of or grudgingly, um, but we give it as unto God an offering. Right. And the third area we see is the arm or something that we help the poor with. If we give alms to the poor, or it's something, um, a, a certain amount of money that we give to the poor in order to help, uh, in order to assist. Um, so we see these three areas of um, giving. Okay, so let's look at uh, the tithe. Okay, um, so by definition, it means one tenth. Okay, let's look at Genesis fourteen and twenty. Um, Genesis 14 and verse 20, we, um, okay, um, yeah, so we see that, uh, sorry, 18 onwards, if you read, actually, uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest to God, most high, and he blessed him and said, blessed be, blessed be Ab Abram of God, most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and uh, blessed be God, most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him, so uh, Abraham gave him a tithe of, also we see the uh, reference to the um, uh, tithe here, right, in Genesis. And then, of course, we read um, Malachi 3. And also, if we turn to Matthew 22, okay, uh, Matthew 22 and verse 21, um, the Lord Jesus uh, saying, uh, this is, you know, uh, when the Pharisees were plotting and, and how can we bring him down and they tested him and they, you know, and they asked the question, is it lawful to ta pay taxes to Caesar? And the Lord answers with all wisdom, show me the tax money. And then he says, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. So, so when we look at tithe, it's something that we render unto God, that we bring unto God, right? Um, Proverbs 3 talks about the first fruit of all our increase. So um, something that we have, uh, the income that we have received, 
things that we have received into our lives uh, financially. You know, we give a tenth of that unto God. Okay. So now there might be certain reasons why, you know, when it comes to tithe, again, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of reasonings, a lot of questions, you know, why should we continue to tithe as people in the New Testament, you know, and so on. So let's look at some of the, uh, some of the objections or some of the reasons why people do not tithe. Okay. First of all, it could be just lack of knowledge. Okay. I do not know this in scripture. So this would, um, uh, you know, this this is something that maybe as a spiritual leader or maybe as pastors, um, it is our responsibility to teach the congregation, right? Not to force, not to manipulate, but to teach from Scripture. Hey, this is what the Word of God says. Okay, this is something that is scripturally laid down. Uh, and to it, it's not done as a, you know, um, as a way of just extracting from people, um, but it's something that is for their good and for their blessing and and above all it's it's from god it's an act of worship to god so um it, it's our responsibility to share that so when they with the knowledge comes obedience to the instruction so uh, maybe it's lack of knowledge and personally maybe uh, people do not uh, you know uh, i mean bring their tithes uh, uh, as a, um, and give their tithes because of lack of knowledge some, sometimes it could be fear. Okay, what if God does not hold up you know, his end of the bargain, his end of the promise? Okay, this is what he says, that he will rebuke the devourer and uh, you know, he will make sure that the wine on uh, the field, you know, everything will bear fruit and, uh, and all that. And, but what if you know, I do this and God does not? Well, the Lord says, uh, try me, test me in this. Sometimes it's fear that keeping that is keeping people from obeying uh, obeying God. Uh, sometimes it's it's selfishness. You know, I I want this. I need it. Uh, uh, I need it for myself. Um, sometimes it's deception, and also deception coming maybe from a place of abuse, also right abuse in the church, where. You know, sometimes you you see a lot of these uh, videos now with the social media. You see that, you know, when when it talks about ministry, people are talking a lot lot of mon about money and about how you need to give in order to receive and and so on. And sometimes there is a lot of uh, abuse of it. Um, and so, you know, we might have that thought: okay, these preachers, these churches, these ministries, they just want your money. So I'm not going to give. Right. Um, so uh, I'm just I'm just not going to give to any of these people. And so you you think that okay, uh, you know it it will not be used well. It will be abuse of it, and they are constantly manipulating. Well, partly true. You know, there is that abuse in the kingdom of God. We see that, um, uh, but also we need to understand that um, well. This, this is. Um, there in the word as well. So you find a place, uh, find a place where there is good stewardship of it. And, uh, and should the Lord lead you, you know, you be part of that place, uh, be planted in that place, be established there and, you know, uh, make sure the tithes are given. Okay. Um, there could be some uh, a religious lies in the sense there could be, a, you know, a wrong understanding of scripture. Okay, so the thing is, okay, a very common thing is this: you know, tithing is part of the Old Testament. It was an Old Testament uh, law, Old Testament principle. Therefore, for us as New Covenant people, um, it's not you know it's not relevant. You know, we we could we could say that you know it's part of the Old Testament law. You know, so. Um, you know, Genesis 14, 20, the verse that we read just now, we see that um, uh, Abram brought about a tithe of all that he had and he paid it to Elkizere. Um But we see that this happened much before, right? um, 400 years before the law was given, right? So... Uh, this was actually done before the law was given. 
and, and um, uh, even Isaac um, tithed. You know, we see that uh, in Genesis. We'll, let's let's read that verse again, uh, Genesis twenty nine. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, Genesis 29 and verse 22 says that, um, okay, uh, say one second. Um, is it 22? I'm sorry, there's a, I think that's a wrong reference. Okay, let me, um, let me recheck that. I'm sorry about that. So we see that, um, you know, tithing is, it, it, it was much before the law came into uh, existence, right? So, um, and we see that, uh, so so, the, so this rationale of tithing is part of the Old Testament law, so, you know, it doesn't hold good. Okay. The second thing is, uh, is also tithing ended at the cross, okay? So that's the old dispensation. Uh, we are in the new dispensation. Um, tithing ended um, at the cross. Now, we are people living on this side of the cross, therefore, uh, tithe is not applicable to us. You know, there could be uh, a, an understanding like that. Okay. So the thing is that um, uh, in scripture, we see that certain things are specifically discontinued, right? And scripture very clearly uh, specifically points that out. For example, you know, we see the, the blood sacrifice, right? In the Old Testament, we know that uh, there was a shedding of blood from the animals, um, and uh, which was an atonement for for our sins. We see that, and and the Lord Jesus dying on the cross, He was that perfect sacrifice, and His blood was shed um, as a final sacrifice. Therefore, you know, this whole thing of blood sacrifice ended at the cross. Right. So it was specifically um, uh, mentioned in in Hebrews when we when we go there. Let's uh, um, yeah, let's look at um, Hebrews nine eleven. Okay, uh, Hebrews nine eleven, and it says that every uh, every priest, uh, sorry, uh, nine and verse eleven, and but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come um, with the greater and uh, more perfect tabernacle, uh, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. And then we look at verse 12, not with the blood of uh, goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained uh, eternal redemption. Okay. Um, so, and uh, verse 25 says, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another, right? He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, Okay, and uh, the next chapter, verse 12, says that this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So we see that, you know, there was no need for any other sacrifice because he was that final sacrifice and the shedding of blood, right? So uh, so the, the animal sacrifices ended with the, with the cross, right? Okay, so I think uh, we've run out of time. So we'll stop here. We'll continue again. We'll just review uh, again uh, tithes, um, and then we'll look at uh, some of this um, uh, reasonings. It's very interesting, and hopefully it'll be you know very liberating as well. We'll look at this again next class. Okay, so right. Thank you. You guys have a good weekend. Uh, God bless. Bye bye.